I'm Pedro Mora with Pacific Media. Pacific in Spanish means peaceful. So Pacific ideas, Pacific thoughts, create Pacific solutions through nonviolent actions like neopolin.ca. Neopolin.ca wants to identify and measure your Pacific ideas of policies which would optimize our common good. Now, polling.ca aims to find out how many of us believe that profits and individual property are the motivating factor of our activities. Or perhaps now, polling.ca will show that the majority of us prioritize the collective social well being of all of us over money. Now, polling.ca will also show how motivated we are to participate in the development of policies which would change our social system. While you think about this possible non-partisan alternative polling system, let's listen to Councillor Philip Lucas explaining his limitations and frustrations of working with the current political system. Councillor Philip Lucas, and you're also a director on the CRD, which is a kind of a middle government between the province and the city. The last time I was visiting uh, the CRD meeting, uh, there was a big discussion about the authority that uh, Committee A and Committee B has over and above the whole of the CRD. Um, why is it uh, legislated that way, and uh, is it good for you? Well, the CRD makes up 13 municipalities and electoral areas, and um, there is a, definitely a, um, a sense that uh, each municipality should ultimately have some control over their development and their future and the way that they want to uh, evolve as communities. But I think that um, the Committee A and Committee B structure was developed to, to, um, uh, in order to be able to address issues that are uh, of greater regional importance. And uh, uh, that's, where the, that's where the rub is right now with the CRD. Um, the CRD created uh, committees, and specifically you're talking about the Juan de Fuca Land Use Committee, in order to deal with uh, development area issues around Juan de Fuca, but when that committee was created, um, there was never an anticipation that the land that was tree farm licensed land would ever be developed with the presumption was that it would stay uh, under the ownership or at least the control of the logging companies. When the, this provincial government decided to release that land and release the obligations of the uh, uh, logging companies and allow them to sell it for development, um, suddenly Committee uh, uh, B, which was uh, there to make smaller land use decisions, it was anticipated that they would, for example, look at uh, zoning issues around putting up an extra garage or new developments within uh, uh, that the um, urban area around uh, Wanda Fuca was now suddenly um, controlling the fate of all of our rural resource lands in that area. and. I don't think there's any doubt in our region, and certainly among our residents, that um, assets like the Juan de Fuca Trail, Jordan River, um, and all of the, the natural areas up there are an incredible uh, a regional asset and should, uh, by you know any estimate, be under some regional control. I heard uh, perhaps 90% of the people in that uh, hearing were opposed to that development. Uh, would you uh, propose uh, perhaps that uh, this issue should go to a referendum so every citizen in British Columbia could vote on it. Well, I don't think that that's ultimately going to be an option. I, 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 I really enjoy direct democracy, uh, um, but a referendum would take uh, months to set up. It would be, um, well, certainly when we've looked at, at, at referendums here in this city, it's uh, uh, over $100,000 to run that kind of referendum. And I don't think that um, it would be justifiable to stall the, the approval of this development. Uh, under those circumstances, and uh, and ultimately, I'm not sure what our legal uh, mandate would be to run a referendum on that development. But what we can do is um, do the best that we can at the CRD to enforce our regional growth strategy. In Vancouver, they have a, a parks board, mm -hmm. 
And here in Victoria, I don't know if you have the same thing or you, you just have a regional thing like the CRD covers that, the parks of the whole region. That's, ex uh, that's exactly right. The uh, CRD has got a parks committee um, that makes decisions around uh, acquisition of, of parkland, maintenance of parkland uh, in, in the entire region. Uh, what uh, would you think about uh, having uh, uh, washrooms in every park? which is something that uh, is very neglected, not, not just in here, but in Vancouver and in many cities across Canada. I'm, I'm supportive of having access to washrooms. I recently here at the city of Victoria, in my role as chair of the Environment and Infrastructure Committee, called for a report to see what we could do to uh, keep our washrooms uh, open longer that are uh, existent in our urban parks here in Victoria. Um, that proved to be cost prohibitive. Another issue is the uh, people that uh, like to do uh, urban gardening. They are uh, requesting that perhaps parts of uh, or section of parks could be uh, assigned to grow uh, food. Would you consider that too? Oh, absolutely. I'm a huge champion of urban gardening. Um, I think uh, urban food production is incredibly important. And um, I continue to be um, the, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, the main counselor in support of our own urban garden here in, uh, at, at City Hall, which is the small step edible landscape garden outside of our, uh, outside of the Pandora yeah. entrance, which is looking fantastic. In fact, it's, it's looking better than my garden at home in many ways. It's understood that most people don't want to pay taxes. Yeah. And uh, yet the uh, city depends on collecting taxes. Uh, I, I was reading... Uh, report from the finance committee here in uh, the city hall and i understand that the city has this desire to shift the funding of services from general taxes to user fees i th i think that there's times when user pay system can be very uh, useful and can um, for example positive shifts in behavior We've got an upcoming uh, sewer tax. It's a, a rainwater uh, sewer tax. And so under the new system that we're looking to implement, and this would start in about two years' time, um, we'd go to a user pay system that would measure the size of your property using uh, uh, photo imagery, uh, so uh, photo imagery of your property. It would calculate the amount of permeable and impermeable surface on your property, and you'd be taxed based on the amount of impermeable surface. So we can actually encourage positive behaviors mm -hmm. in terms of uh, effective water use and rewarding people who say, put in uh, uh, not just rain gardens, but even vegetable gardens by, uh, through that kind of taxation regime. So I think that that's the kind of progressive taxation that makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about our recent uh, residential tax rate. Council um, decided to, in order to keep business taxes low, to make the residential tax rate 7%. So this year, anyone who owns a home in Victoria is seeing a 7% seeing a increase in our residential taxes, whereas businesses will only see a 1% increase. And I think that that is unsustainable. At a time when our city council is um, uh, so focused on creating affordable housing and of making the city of Victoria more affordable living, it makes absolutely no sense and is unjustifiable to raise our, our uh, property taxes uh, for residents is 7% uh, just to artificially keep down uh, the business tax rate to around 1%. And I say that both as a property owner and as a downtown business owner. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, you voted against that uh, proposition, and, uh, but the majority of uh, city councillors approved it? That's right. I was the only person who voted uh, to keep the residential tax rate uh, down. And uh, what I was proposing instead was more of an equalization tax. It would have meant, meant a 4% tax increase for, for residents uh, for, and property owners and a 4% increase for businesses. Um, but unfortunately, I was the only person to vote to try and keep that residential tax rate uh, under control. And uh, I just think this is unsustainable. We have what we know about our city and our region is that we have a 25% uh, rate of childhood poverty, that we have the lowest income, average income in the entire region at about $38,000, and, um, and that this is a really difficult city to afford to live in, and this isn't going to help. The counter argument to this, which is that some businesses will rather move to a city where their taxes are going to be lower, and in order to keep them here, then they're trying to please these uh, businesses. 
taxes played a very small part in that consideration. What we have to realize and remember is that businesses go where residents are. And if we can encourage people to live downtown and to live in, Vic in Greater Victoria, the businesses will stay here. Uh, box stores move out to places like Langford and Saanich because that's where the population's moving out. It's not the other way, way around. Populations don't move to follow box stores. Because of Texas. Exactly. And so I think that ultimately um, when a store decides to establish itself in Langford or Saanich, uh, taxes play just only a small percentage of the consideration as to why they do that. But if we keep a vibrant uh, downtown population, then I have no doubt that the businesses will want to be here as well. Outsource services privatize certain services. How is uh, Victoria or the for-profit businesses uh, managing to get those uh, originally done by public uh, services to privatize? How is Victoria doing there? Um, I think we've got a mixed record on that. Um, I'm very, I was, uh, on, on the, a good example is the, the, the upcoming sewage treatment project. And um, it's the biggest expenditure this region's going to make. It's a $750 million plan. And um, I was quite surprised to find that on the CRD board, I was the only person to put forward a motion and to vote for a motion to keep that entire project in public hands. Ultimately, I think it turned out um, pretty well in that 80% of the pro project will be public and 20% will be private. But I couldn't see uh, the 20% that will be privatized is the uh, part that has the highest chance of actually making a profit. And so I don't understand why we would be giving away the, the aspects of this project that have the lowest risk and the highest chance of reward and maintaining the high risk uh, propositions within public hands. So I'm absolutely supportive of um, well-paid jobs and of uh, keeping our public se sector healthy and making sure that, um, that we have the best people doing the best work uh, that's, that's possible in our region. I'm, I'm quite concerned over recent directions to outsource or our recycling, to potentially outsource a uh, collection of, uh, of backyard waste and, kitchen, uh, and, and uh, kitchen scraps as well. And I think all of that can be done effectively by our public sector right now. How can uh, uh, the city have, uh, uh, the population that supports the city have cost savings when somebody is doing it for profit? In other words, not just the cost of labor, and whatever materials they need, but plus uh, uh, um, profits. I agree. I mean, I think that that's the problem. You, you'll either have uh, profiteering going on, in other words, inflated contracts, or you're going to have the, the impulse and the urge to do, see some corners being cut. And I worry about both those aspects, people making profit off of uh, public services and also uh, people deciding that they can save a bit of money by doing something a little bit, by, by, yeah, by cutting a few corners, taking a few more risks. Um, I don't think that, that bene either one of those scenarios benefit uh, local residents and certainly doesn't benefit our, our public sector, which we absolutely need to support. I'm a, um, I'm a big believer in, um, in, that, in workers' rights, and I think that we've seen uh, an erosion of workers' rights at all levels of society uh, over the last uh, 10 or 15 years through uh, the implementation of neoliberal policies that outsource our current, uh, uh, our current services. 